I'm going to teach you how to mod Dragon's Dogma 2. And what's really cool is this is going to apply to other Capcom games like Street Fighter 6 and the Resident Evil series, especially the new modern ones. Before we jump into it, I'm Ward and this is the Easy Mode channel. You may know me from the Tech Syndicate channel. My goal is to focus more on this and game development because that's what I want to do with my life. I want to make games and play games and make music. Speaking of that, this video is brought to you by the products that we make over here on EpicPants.com. We've got half price on the keyboard, half price on these mice, so head over to EpicPants.com and all the music in this video was composed by me. So if you like the stuff you're hearing, stuff that's inspired by old school RPGs and whatnot, you can head over to Bandcamp. There's a link in the description and check out this music. So anything that happens on this channel is going to support game development, just so you know. Let's hop in and start modding. Fair warning when we get into this game, there's a, a lot of butts in this game because it's a Capcom game and uh, you can be barbarians in the uh, purest sense of running around half naked. And I like it, so deal. <laughs> The reason it's so easy to mod this is because of the fluffy mod manager. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Just head over to the nexusmods.com, Dragon's Dogma. All these links are in the description. The first thing we want is the fluffy mod manager. Now you're going to need an account to install any of this stuff. So go ahead and set up yourself an account. We're going to assume that you have that. We have all these tabs. That's the layout. Here's the description. And the description will always tell you, well, almost always, if they're a good mod maker, they'll tell you exactly what to do and how to, you know, how, how to use this. And they'll tell you if they know of any incompatibility compatibilities or whatever. And then we have the file section. That's where you want to go. Now just manually download this and then click on the slow download. There we go. Slow downloads. All right. Open up that folder. Now this is opening up in 7-zip here. If you have something else to open it like WinRAR or whatever, you do you. But I've got 7-zip. This doesn't install like a normal program. You just drag and drop it to a folder. So I'm going to create a folder in my games directory. I already have a copy of it there, but we're going to drop it in there anyway. There we go. Replace. Just update everything. And when you first open Mod Manager, it's going to ask you to select your game. So you just go through the list here and pick whatever game. See, this is going to work on a lot of different games and giving you a lot of knowledge here. So go ahead and pick the one that's for you. There we go. Dragon's Dogma 2. Now, as soon as you do that, I'm going to minimize this again. Take a look at this folder. Now we have a games folder right here. Inside the games folder, we have Dragon's Dogma 2. If you've got Street Fighter or the Resident Evil games or whatever, those are all going to show up right here. But Dragon's Dogma 2, and then we have a folder called mods. Now, this is where we're going to put all of our mods. Now it's time to come over here and download some mods. And there's a couple different types of mods that we can download. Now there are just the regular mods that you just throw in the, the folder and then activate. And then there's other mods that are scripts. So I'll show you how to do the two different types. And then you'll be able to pretty much install anything. If you're running a, an NVIDIA card, this new DLSS update is really handy. It's newer than the version that comes in the game. I'm going to download the NVIDIA DLSS 3.7. So let that download. I'm just going to download a few things right now. Item tweaks I really like because this allows you to set the weight to zero. And if you're someone like me who likes to explore and just collect a ton of stuff and not worry about like always every five seconds being over encumbered, then there you go. This is a single player game. It's not cheating. Come on now. So if you want a little bit better of a HUD, well, we can we can do that. This is the vanilla. But hey, let's it's like a smaller. That's nice. And if you want to put it over there, some people like it up here. They like their their map on the top right. We can grab this. And also, if you've got an ultra wide monitor, there's a version for you as well. See, like right now when you're playing on ultra wide, it's really annoying because the all the stuff's crammed into the middle of the screen. This mod does what the game should have done in the beginning. By the way, a lot of these mods, that's kind of the thing here. A lot of these mods are making the game kind of the way it should have been. Microtransactions, yay. So this is just undoing a lot of the terrible decisions that were probably forced on the developers by the higher ups because the higher ups have no idea what they're doing at Capcom, but the developers do. Teleport anywhere without buying any DLC. See what I'm talking about? Just download and if you can download anything you want. And this is really annoying. You know how your pawns are always wandering into the brine? Why? And why does the water always kill you in these games? Come on. I figured that would be updated, but no. All right, so let's just download that. Uh, this one's interesting. It marks important NPCs because a lot of times you're running around and you don't know who you need to talk to. This puts a name above the important NPCs heads. I'm going to download this. I turn it on and off depending on the situation. If I can't find someone I need to talk to, I'll turn that on and be like, there they are. And uh, yeah, I got sick of hearing about these ladders. So let's download Shut Up Pawns. And you can download anything you like. I'm going to go through this a little bit faster here. This is uh, probably my favorite mod. Mouse, wheel, camera, distance. If you're on a PC, and you're using a mouse, it just makes sense to be able to scroll your mouse and then zoom in and zoom out. So definitely downloading this one. 
There's a couple other camera tweaks that are specifically for like using a mouse and keyboard and I'll put those in the description. I'm not going to show you in this video because you know once you download a few things you'll get the idea and then it'll be cool. So this one I like it makes the masquerade gowns a lot cooler and you know you can wear these outside of the masquerade. When it comes to the script mods I love transmogify. Now this is something that's default in Street Fighter. You can wear one set of armor and you'll have the stats of that and then you have a second set of armor that you wear purely for aesthetics so that you can make your character look one way while benefiting from the stats of the higher armor that you've picked up. This just allows you to say like, okay, I'm wearing this shirt. Well, let's make it look like this other piece of armor and you can just set it up that way. It's very easy to do. So transmogify is something that I always like to see in my RPGs. When you click on download, it'll tell you what it you know requires. It says it requires the RE framework and I'm gonna download this toolkit right here. And this allows you to hide different elements and whatnot, but it does a few different things. So yeah, we'll go ahead and download that. And again, all these are going to be in the description. And this is a weapon transmog. You got all these different things. I like to hide the shields on the back because I like seeing the back because butts. So I'm going to download the one that makes the fighter shield invisible on their back. When they pull it out, it's obviously visible. And then one thing that's weird is whenever you have a shield, it changes the look of the armor. I download this because whenever you hide the shield on the back, it also hides the gloves. But this mod fixes that. I'm going to download this teleportation mod, yes. That way you can teleport. This is amazing. Download it. It also requires something called script core. So whenever you see something that says, oh, it requires something else, you just middle click on that it'll open it up over here so download that slow download and come over here it says script core we just need to download this and install it no big deal and the last really important api that we're going to need is this one the xyz api go ahead and download that and just get all that into your mod folder and then the last mod I'm going to download is something that you have to install separately. It's a stutter fixer. It's really goofy and simple. It's just a registry hack. What this does is it installs a little registry key in Windows to tell Windows to always run Dragon's Dogma 2 in high priority mode, which will actually remove a lot of the stuttering. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what? This makes the game run much smoother. Now, in order to take advantage of that, you do have to reboot your computer. All right, so we got a bunch of stuff downloaded, right? So I'm going to grab everything except for that stutter fixer. We don't need to grab that. That one but i'm gonna grab everything that we just downloaded and i'm gonna drag and drop it into that mods folder in in the fluffy mod manager and then we can even launch the game from inside here but once you turn these on you can use the steam launcher if you want to you can launch the game any way you want to launch it whenever you see this little plus symbol right here that means that if you click on it there are multiple different options uh, i don't like to cheat that much so i'm gonna make my weight zero but i don't want to do the gold cost one that'll make you know all the stuff cost one gold and that kind of breaks the game for me it's no fun anymore like it's it removes too much of the essence of the game all right need this toolbox here symmetrical armor and the transmog so i got all these things installed now we can launch our game from here or it doesn't matter we can come back over here to steam and click on play RE framework uh, handles scripting, so it's not just texture replacers and stuff. This is like actually doing things to the game. And there's our little toolbox. We'll get into the game here. All right, so this is not the system that I play this on, so it's going to look ugly. By pressing the insert button, we can bring up our uh, RE framework over here. And you can see we have different things here, just about configure. This is our menu key, and it's set to the insert. I'm going to click on remember menu open and close state. So that way, when you open up the game again, if you had this closed, well, it'll open up and then it'll close itself. Now, this is cool with camera. We can enable this and get rid of our vignette on the side. So that's an option I turn on on mine, but I use reshade to add back in a vignette. But this is all up to you. You can enable the vignette, or you can... Just make it a little less severe. I think it's kind of severe in this game, so. And we can change our FOV. I like about, uh, about 90. Feels like a PC game now. We also can scroll in and out with our mouse because we have that installed. All right, so that's what I do with the camera. Moving on down, we have our graphics section. If you have ultra wide, you can turn these on, but I don't need to worry about that. Check this out, hide the GUI. I set up a hotkey for this. So I'm gonna use number pad five. Really nice for screenshots, but I also like this when I'm just like, you know, running around in the world. These dumb blue dots over people. We'll get rid of those in just a second. Next, we have the free cam. Let's set up a toggle key for that. I'm going to use number pad 9. Oh, God, that's way too violently fast. Press 9 again. So I need to change the sensitivity of the free cam. So there's my toggle key. I set that. And then over here, the rotation speed. Bringing that way down. Bringing down the speeds. Okay, I can handle this. Also moving my character, but we'll, we'll figure that out in a second. So there's something cool you can do. Below that, you're gonna see that we have scene tools. Now this allows us to change our time scale. So check this out. If I bring the time scale really far down, let's go not to the negatives, you know, it'll break the game if you go into the negatives. So that's as low as I can pretty much get it right here. Almost, uh, let's see. And I'm gonna set a, a, a key toggle for the time scale. You can set any key toggle you like. I'm using number pad three. All right, let's run and then toggle slow-mo. 
All right, cool. God, this looks hideous on this machine, but you get the idea. Oh, no, no, negative will break the game. Well, well look what I've done. <laughs> oh, God. Did I just land that? Oh, yes, I landed that. Do not go into the negatives. <laughs> I warned myself, but I didn't listen. All right, well, maybe you want it to go a little bit slower. So I'll show you how to make it go even slower, but we have to go back out of the game for that. All right, let's go into our game folder. In order to get there, the easiest way is to head over to Steam, click on the cog on the right, click on Manage, and click on Browse Local Files. You want the RE Framework Config, RE2 Framework Config, right there. You can, you know, edit everything from in here. This is all your stuff. I'm specifically looking for that time scale on my scene. So come down to Scene, and there's our time scale. Let's make it, I don't know, four zeros. There we go. And then I'll make this last one a five. That's going to be nice and slow. Save that. And it's, I can't, I wish I could type it in, you know, manually in the actual game, but whatever. Run, 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 and slow-mo. Oh, yes. This is so slow. Free cam. Let's see how slow we're going. So if you want to, like, freeze frame and hold a position, this might be even too slow if you're trying to, like, you, you can toggle on and off. Why does this game have that much boob shake? What the hell? What's going on in Japan? You get the idea. Look at that slow-mo. That is amazing. So these are all the scripts that we've downloaded and all the ones that came with it. You can ignore the, the VR stuff. It's just whatever. You can turn it on and off if you want to. But right here we have Pawn Survive Brine, the toolboxes and all that, the stuff down here. So this toolbox that we downloaded, let's see here. I can, I can hide my helmet. Now we can see that cool hairdo I've got. Hide the top. Whatever. Hide the hair. Great. Sinead O'Connor running around. So yeah, you can do all that kind of stuff. No script errors yet. If you ever get script errors, you can come back up here and reset your scripts. And then down at the bottom, there are script generated UI. Now these are the different user interfaces for your script. And here's your minimum maximum camera distance. Way out. Let's get really close. Now we can zoom way out. Uh, bumping into the scenery and zoom way back in. It, you know, you get the idea. It works. Shut up pawns. We have a list of things that they say. There's a ladder. So blah, it just basically makes the pawn stop talking about ladders. That's all it really does. All right. Mark important NPCs. Show a circle? No. I want to show their names. That's it. There's our pawn survive brine. I like them to warp to the player because sometimes they warp somewhere else and fall back in the brine. So pawn survive brine. When they go jump in the brine, they'll just warp to you. And then down here, this is our teleportation. Check this out. Locations. Um, let's go to Burnworth. Teleport. Just give it a second. And watch what happens. And here we all are. Let me get rid of push insert to get rid of that. And here we are in Burnworth. Finally have a functional fast travel. Normally I don't like fast travel in my games because I really enjoy going from point A to point B and getting into a ton of shenanigans. But I feel like this world was designed to make you angry enough to buy the stupid fast travel tokens or whatever they are because you know there's some areas that are kind of open like this but a lot of the areas feel like you're just going through a narrow corridor to get to point a to point b and all that so i really like that you can just print push Control t to bring up your fast travel menu if you want and then you have all the f keys here okay i want to go to let's see where should i go let's go to bakpatal there we go off we go this is going to save me a lot of time and now we're here. If you just go down to the bottom here, you'll see Transmogify. Scroll down. We can click and make this a little bit bigger here. All right, so check this out. What have I got on here? I've got on the Rangers thing. Sometimes it's easier to hit escape and then click on equipment or whatever. Where is equipment? Click on equipment and then I'm going to see what I'm wearing right now, which is I'm wearing the Rangers vest. So come over here to this thing. I'll show you how to do like one or two things and you'll get the idea. So I'm going to click on body and this is called the ranger. So rangers, ranger's vest. There it is. So select ranger's vest and now we can transfer this into something else. So I like the half plate. Let's see how that looks. And this can be anything regardless of class. Enable transmogs, of course. You got to check mark that or else it's not going to work. And then hit submit. And what that does is it adds one thing to your transmog list. And check it out. I'm now wearing half plate. Looks really cool. Let's transmog something else. You want to make her, uh, there we go, make her pants look stupid. So I've got the, what is this thing called? The Blessed Waist Cloth. So let's change that one. That would be on leg. It's called Blessed. There it is, Blessed Waist Cloth. There it is, the Blessed Waist Cloth. Now let's change that to something else. What do you want to do? Uh, how about, uh, what's good? Savant's Boots. All right, now I'm running around with my butt out. So now I am using the appearance 
of this butt thing here, whatever it's called, I forgot. Then I also have the half plate on top, so I look cool. And let's say, you know what, I want to wear this thing. I, you know, maybe I want to hide this for now. So let's just, uh, let's hide this. And that's going to be a mantle. There we go. Now we can run around, have fun, uh, without no clothes on. If you want to slay dragons naked, you do it. If you want to be a 400 pound person naked slaying dragons, do it. You'll be the first Lardbarian, and I will support you. By all means. Alright, so that works just fine. That's how you get everything modded. Oh, she is tired. Lord have mercy. There's also some tweaks to remove stamina drain. Because having stamina drain when you're not in combat is just tedious and bad game design in my opinion. Why would they do that? I don't know. Like, I like stamina drain in combat. It makes for, you know, some tactical gameplay. But stamina drain right now? No. No, no, no. So yeah, you can turn that off too. Just grab a stamina mod or whatever. You can install any mods you like. Now that you know how. So now you know how to mod Capcom games, especially Dragon's Dogma 2. Once it clicks and you understand how the RE framework works and you understand how Fluffy Mod Manager works, the world is open to you and you can install anything you like. And just note that, you know, every now and then there's going to be an update to the game. So if some mods break here and there, you might want to go and re-download them or download the newest versions. Now, this is a bigger deal when it comes to games like Street Fighter that are updating core characters a lot. These, you know, main characters. Mods that work in the open world version of that game will be just fine, but sometimes your mods for the different characters are going to break because they make changes. I found that in Dragon's Dogma that's not such a big deal because you create your own character and they're not making changes to any core characters in the game. So it's these mods tend to work a little bit better in my opinion. But I feel like now that we have these mods we can craft the game uh, into what it should have been, which is kind of what we do with Bethesda games. Now we're doing it with Capcom games. I mean you gotta you gotta do something to compensate for the greed and, and weird design choices, but you can make it awesome. Run around naked slaying, uh, I don't know, ogres and stuff. So enjoy. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll take a look. And also, don't forget to check out that music and EpicPants.com. I'll see you all in the comments. Thanks for watching.